Good morning, brothers and sisters, and happy Sabbath. As we return to our study of the minor prophet Zephaniah, let us ask our Heavenly Father for his guidance so that we may more properly understand this book, the time in which it is written, but also as how it is written for us today. Shall we pray? Gracious Father in heaven, we thank you for this opportunity to assemble on the Sabbath. We thank you for your guidance. We thank you for the many blessings that we have been receiving. And we praise you in all things. Help us now as we go back through this book of Zephaniah. In the first book of Zephaniah, help us to understand this letter, its import and its implications for us today. Direct us now. Be with us each one, may your will be done. May your angels attend us, may your spirit be with us. For we need you, especially now. Help us to most properly represent your character in all that we do and in all that we come before. For this we pray and thank you in Jesus name, amen. Mm -hmm. Now, over the last many weeks, we have been studying through the first part of the letter of Zephaniah. We're going to go through this as a review, because this, I was led to put together as if the church and those that had compiled what they call the Ellen White Study Bible, if they had chosen to look at the different warnings that are contained just in the first chapter. <coughs> what is it that we see as we look at just this portion of this first page of this book? Verse 2 kind of sums it up. God's severe judgment against Judah for diverse sins. Well. Or the second comment there. Is it not interesting that in this, that there are only two divisions of the book for the entire book? Each of these is normally broken out with the little paragraph symbol, with the exception that they never do that with the first verse. In this, this letter is very pointed. It's very direct. It tells us the time when Zephaniah prophesied. The word of the Lord, which came unto Zephaniah, the son of Cushi, the son of Gedaliah, the son of Amariah, the son of Hezekiah, in the days of Josiah, son of Ammon, king of Judah. Where would we line up Josiah at this point if we were to place his reign upon a line? Um, so if you're going to place Josiah's reign upon um, what you're saying with this, the last seven kings of Judah, right? Because it's going to begin with Manasseh, right? And Ammon, then Josiah, 
So, I mean, if you take the third way mark as being um, the empowerment of the first angel's message, then Josiah would line up with the empowerment of the first angel's message. And so Josiah is part of the time of the end. Well, yeah, part of that that history. Yeah. Now you also <laughs> have um, because in in Leviticus twenty six, um, you have the four seven times. So you have this, the last seven kings of Judah, but the four seven times are fulfilled in very specific uh, histories. That is, the first is in with Manasseh's captivity. The second, in the time of Jehoiakim, with Daniel's captivity. And then you have uh, Jehoiachin uh, in his reign. That's going to be the third seven times. And then the fourth with Zedekiah. So right. not, not all the kings have, have, have these marked. Now, we also had Jehoiachin as... Um, um, I believe the the midnight cry. So so because he's the last one before Zedekiah. So anyway, we've we've structured this line at some point. Uh, Jeff has. Uh, right. I, th I think he actually did it in 2013, though he didn't fully have um, all of the understanding of midnight. So when he was doing the the seven thunders related to the seven kings. Um, he didn't. He he marked them with the thunders, which later we ended up marking them with the various way marks. But this is in in connection with um, the time uh, of the first, you know, the first message or the first of the seven times, because it's in this period that it says if you if you are not reformed by these things, then the second event would happen, which is the wild beasts, Daniel. So it's in the time here, and you also have um, uh, Jehoah has as well. So actually, I think yeah, Ammon, I, I, I'd have to go over it again. But anyway, um, this is going to be uh, really the first angel's message, if, if we want to look at it that way. Okay. So. <clears throat> so from here, if we're not willing to listen to the warning that is being given by Zephaniah, we are not going to be benefited by the other messages that will help us to understand things more clearly, just as the warnings of Habakkuk and of other of the prophets that spoke at this same time. Now, when it says in the next verse, I will utterly consume all things from off the land, saith the Lord. Or by taking away, I will make an end from off the face of the land, saying, saith the Lord. What is being said here? We have looked at this that Judah represents the church and that Judah represents the movement. Is this not a warning for us today? Mm -hmm. I will consume man and beast. I will consume the fowls of the heaven and the fishes of the sea and the idols with the wicked. And I will cut off man from off the land, saith the Lord. Now, this is an utter destruction.
can we say that this is something to be lightly regarded? No. I will also stretch out mine hand upon Judah and upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem. And I will cut off the remnant of Baal from this place and the name of the Cameron's with the priests. Now, who would we establish the Cameron's to represent? Um, like, well, these idolatrous priests. Right. Um, but it, symbolically within the movement, you mean? Yes. Okay. So, um, well, we have the Camerons with the priests. So this is saying the false priests with the the priests. So that would be um, Cohen, the, the true priests. Is this not a, another representation of wheat and tares? Um, I don't know if I would put wheat and tares there because in both of these cases, okay. uh, the priests here are going to be cut off as well as the Camerons. So that's the way I read it anyway. Right. So it's just because the, the priests or God's, uh, you know, church, the, the ministers, they're going to be cut off as the, as the false ministers, which would be, you know, the Protestant ministers. So when we're, when he's saying, I will stretch out mine hand upon Judah and the habits, inhabitants of Jerusalem, and I will cut off the remnant of Baal from this place and the name of the Cameron's with the priests and them that worship the host of heaven upon the housetop and then them, them that worship and that swear by the Lord and that swear by Malcolm or Molech. and them that are turned back from the Lord and those who have not sought the Lord nor inquired for him. <clears throat> yeah, so it's showing that is that Judah is going to be treated just as he has treated those that are involved in false worship because Judah is involved in false worship. That's how I read it. So if Judah is representative of the church and also of the movement, mm -hmm. can we state that at this point, the movement is not prepared to give a message to the world, just as the church is not prepared and has chosen not to give a message to the world? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, the thing that we've seen in our study is that the, the movement isn't really any better than the church. Right. We're being given an opportunity. Mm -hmm. We either make the most of the opportunity or we fail. <clears throat> hold thy peace at the presence of the lord god for the day of the lord is at hand for the lord hath prepared a sacrifice and he hath sanctified or he hath prepared his guests The Lord has prepared a sacrifice, a blessing. 
he has sanctified his guests. His guests have come. They are ready to be clothed in his garments. They have chosen to be clothed in those garments. They are prepared for the garments. They have done what they are asked to do. And it shall come to pass in the day of the Lord's sacrifice that I will punish the princes and the king's children and all such that are as clothed with strange apparel. Who is being punished here? Well, Judah. Is this not the leadership? Yeah. Well, the princes and the kings <clears throat> and all such as are clothed with strange apparel. And we have accepted strange apparel as being. Well, that's our own righteousness. Right. So those that come to the wedding with their own garment, not the one prepared by Christ. Right. In the same day also, I will punish all those that leap on the threshold, which fill their master's houses with violence and deceit. How do we approach this verse? How should we approach it? Now, leaping upon the threshold. Um, so this is um, some kind of um, reference to some kind of worship, I would think. <clears throat> well, um, you have this in First uh, Samuel five verse five. Right. Uh, it says, um, "So this is about the Philistines when they took the ark." Okay. And it says, therefore, neither the priest of Dagon nor any that came into Dagon's house tread on the threshold of Dagon in Ashdod unto this day. So this is that um, this idea of leaping or treading or walking. So I, I think it would just refer to some kind of entering into worship. But here they leap upon the threshold. And in so doing, they fill their master's houses with violence and deceit. So, I mean, it could be a reference to, um, you know, somebody breaking in. Um, but I'm not, I'm not really sure. But that's, that's the reference the, they give. Um, As we've gone back over these first nine verses, mm -hmm. If we are dealing with a false worship or a type of false worship, mm -hmm. is this also not a false and trying to enter into a false covenant relationship? Yeah. And when it says they fill their master's houses with violence and deceit, um, What would that be referencing? Well, <clears throat> I was looking at this as the possibility of addressing the second of the blessings that were given at creation. 
one being the Sabbath, the other being the marriage covenant. And when they fill their master's houses with violence and deceit, are they not doing violence to the word of God? Are they not being deceitful, taking the name of the Lord in vain by not being able to worship him in spirit and in truth? Or by not choosing to worship him in spirit and in truth? So this would be those that are, when it talks about the master's houses, those are all the different doctrines or beliefs or religions. Um, Because this is a a type of false worship that's being talked about. Um, uh, So Angela has their Judges 19 verse 27. Okay. Why would you why would you think that? I thought of what I was focusing on threshold. I thought of that first time. I was wondering if it had any you know, importance, whether it could apply to it anyway. It says her Lord rose up in the morning and opened the doors of the house and went out to go his way. And behold, the woman his concubine was fallen down at the door of the house and her hands were upon the threshold. Seeking entrance, obviously, wanting, wanting to rescue, which she never got. Mm. Well, <clears throat> let's see what Mrs. White says about these verses. Okay. There is coming very soon an almost universal guilt upon the cities that are increasing in determined wickedness. God has given life to the creature man in order that through a knowledge of the word and by practicing its principles, the human agent may become one with God, obedient to the divine will. But Satan has been working constantly by many devisings to bring man into disfavor with God. Can someone else read the next two paragraphs, please? Yeah, I can do that. Um, In the antediluvian world, human agencies brought in all manner, oh, well, you read, is that the part where I'm at? Yes. All manner of devisings and ingenious practices to make of none effect the law of Jehovah. They cast aside his authority because it interfered with their schemes. As in the days before the flood, so now, the time is right upon us when the Lord God must reveal his omnipotent power. Even many of those who claim to believe the truth do not practice the truth. They have the word but they do not live in accordance with its precepts. Their business affairs are not conducted in harmony with its teachings. The devising of men in executing their own purposes reveals the masterly hand of the enemy. Satan is working with skill and with deceptive power to counterwork the express will of God made plain in his word. For years, Satan has been taking control of many human minds. The right doers who would fear and glorify God will use the words of David. It is time for thee, O Lord, to work, for they have made void thy law. And it is only when men reach this point in towns and in cities that the universal perversion of the law of Jehovah becomes a destructive, determined evil. Through his prophet Zephaniah, The Lord specifies the things that he will bring upon evildoers. Now, in these words of David, we are provided with a combination of two symbols. 
what symbols are those? The chapter gives us 9-11. Mm -hmm. And 126. And the 126 gives us the 1260 or a portion of the 2520. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so we are given this as way marks showing that as, as David prophesied many years before it is time for thee O Lord to work for they have made void thy law we are seeing the law of God made void all over in front of us The kingdom of heaven is like unto a certain king, which made a marriage for his son and sent forth his servants to call them that were bidden to the wedding. And they would not come. Again, he sent forth other servants saying, tell them which are bidden. Behold, I have prepared my dinner. My oxen and my fatlings are killed. And all things are ready. Come unto the marriage. But they made light of it and went their ways, one to his farm, another to his merchandise. And the remnant took his servants and entreated them spitefully, excuse me, and entreated them spitefully and slew them. But when the king heard thereof, he was wroth and he sent forth his armies and destroyed those murderers and burned up their city. Then saith he to his servants, the wedding is ready, but they which were bidden aren't, were not worthy. Go ye therefore unto the highways and as many as ye shall find bid <coughs> to the marriage. So those servants went out into the highways and gathered together all as many as they found, both bad and good, and the wedding was furnished with guests. Do we recall this parable? Have we applied this parable to ourselves? This is not just for the church. This is also for us. <coughs> the king sent his messengers first to the higher classes. Those who were called his chosen people. This is an uncomfortable comment. But these wholly intent on securing worldly gain sent in their refusal saying, I pray thee, have me excused. Here, combined with Matthew 22, is Luke 14, 18 and 19. These two parables, Mrs. White combines into one. Mm -hmm. They did not feel sufficient respect for the master of the feast to respond to his invitation. They did not feel sufficient respect for the sacrifice of Christ to come to the wedding of the Lamb. 
They are represented by the words, them that are turned back from the Lord and those that have not sought the Lord or inquired for him. Thinking their own wisdom sufficient, they have much to say as though they are oracles of wisdom. The Lord declares, hold thy peace at the presence of the Lord God. For the Lord is at hand, for the Lord hath prepared a sacrifice. He hath bid his guests. And it shall come to pass in the day of the Lord's sacrifice that I will punish the prince and the king's children. And all such are as clothed with strange apparel. In the same day also will I punish all of those that leap on the threshold, which fill their master's houses with violence and deceit. <coughs> Who owns the world? Who is the master of the world? Yeah, the, the Lord owns the world. I mean, Satan considers himself the prince of the world. But this is God's world. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. We do not want to be said that we are filling our master's houses with violence and deceit. She continues, <clears throat> when the princes of the land refused the invitation, the king sent his messengers into the highways, which were found those who were not so absorbed in the work of buying and selling, of planting and building. Building transactions were not made of such importance that eternity was left out of the reckoning. The wedding is ready, the king said but they which were bidden were not worthy. Go ye therefore into the highways and as many as you shall find bid to the marriage. So those servants went into the highways and gathered together as many as they found both bad and good. And the wedding was furnished with guests. And when the king came in to see the guests, he saw a man which had not on a wedding garment. And he said unto him, friend, how camest thou in hither, not having a wedding garment? And he was speechless. He had no defense. <clears throat> then said the king, bind him hand and foot and take him away and cast him into the outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth for many are called, but few are chosen. Um, so it should be noted that uh, he was asking for both bad and good. And then when somebody didn't have the, the wedding garment, he threw him out. Or, well, not just threw him out, but, you know, bound him up and tossed him. Right. So are we to read that bad and good in that particular way? Because, I mean, he... <laughs> He asked for bad and good. Okay. So let me ask it this way. When you're speaking bad and good, there are going to be those that have had access to great light and those that have had access not to such great light. Are we not bidden that we are to make, light, make use of the light that we have? <clears throat> oh, absolutely. So would those that have great light and make use of it be more properly considered as the good and those that don't have quite as much access to the light but use 
all of the light that has come to them could be considered as the bad? Or, or potentially the wedding feast is, uh, or, you know, coming to the wedding um, is a period of time. And that's the time that you have the ability to make that decision to whether you are going to be and the consequences are as follows. Okay. I mean, I'm just, look, I'm just reading this stuff as it's coming along and, and how other people will react to certain statements. I mean, I mean, I can understand it, but a lot of other people, and I wouldn't have understood it earlier in my life, but as we progress down this path, um, understanding is better and and uh, the conformity to the word is a lot easier um, because you're being enriched by it. Okay. Positively, what's going on, how it's happening, and those things. And then we see these things going on, and these are just convicting, convicting um, events in my eye because you know before you before you're like oh yeah maybe what and then now you just you you're concentrating on it going hmm uh, what's next <laughs> as opposed to oh whatever you know because you see things come through and and you hear things being said about things and you oh, okay well we'll see you know that because that's what we do is we sit on the on the fence and we go i'm Okay, let's watch and see what goes on. And then finally you get off the fence to the whatever side that you choose. And that's what I kind of see this. I mean, because everything seems to be a progression, not necessarily an instantaneous event, but a progression of time in those events. I'll see you. Well, let's see what Mrs. White said further. <clears throat> This teaches us that there are those who come in to enjoy the privileges of the banquet of truth, who have not eaten the flesh and drank the blood of the Son of God. <clears throat> Many disciples walked no further with him because he said, you must eat my flesh and drink my blood. They understood well that he was speaking figuratively, but they chose to apply it literally. They claim to believe and to teach the word to others, but they work the works of unrighteousness. But ye have not so learned Christ. If so, be that ye have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus, that ye put off concerning the former conversation, the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lusts, and be renewed in the spirit of the mind, and that ye put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Wherefore, putting away lying, Speak every man truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. Be ye angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath, neither give place to the devil. Where would we find this and who has given this, this admonition? <clears throat> that's Paul it's, it's in, in Ephesians Ephesians 4 <clears throat> now when he's giving this admonition to the Ephesians 
why is it so pointed and why does it apply so directly with what Zephaniah is seeing here? Those that have come to Christ and I keep walking with them, as Ron was saying, they're going to put off the filthy conversation of the past, the way they acted in the past. They're going to let Christ they work with him to uproot that those sins and those bad behaviors. Those that refuse to, although they, they hear the word, they're not doers of it. All right. Apparently, I am not being clear. In Zephaniah 1.5, we just read, And them that worship the host of heaven upon the housetops, and them that worship and that swear by the Lord, and that swear by Malcolm, which is also Molech. Are these not idolatrous practices? Yes. Yes. This teaches us that there are those who come in to enjoy the privileges of the banquet of truth, who are holding on to their idols rather than holding on to Christ. Is that direct enough? Yes. <clears throat> Are we finding this within the movement? Are we finding this in ourselves? Well, yes. And it shall come to pass in that day, saith the Lord, that there shall be the noise of a cry from the fish gate, and an howling from the second, and a great crashing from the hills. Howl ye inhabitants of Maktesh, for all the merchant people are cut down. All they that bear silver are cut off. And it shall come to pass at that time that I will search Jerusalem with candles. I will punish the men that are thickened on their leaves, that say in their heart, the Lord will not do good, neither will he do evil. that says, we will see if this will come to pass. This again is a very fearful pronouncement. How can a watchman doubt the word of God? How can he place more belief in his own opinions than in the word of God? <clears throat> well, to answer that question, most people haven't thought it out logically. And what I mean by that is, is, is your argument actually a logical argument? How do you test those things? You have to continually poke holes in your own logic until you settle down into the truth. But if you're not willing, because uh, you just want to use it as a, as a way to uh, continue a reasoning to continue what you're doing, like lying to yourself. Yep. Don't believe everything you think. <laughs> I 
God would have Brother Smith visit foreign countries as his missionary <clears throat> if he would do the work of God thoroughly and faithfully. If the same irresponsible position is carried out by him in the future as in the past, the most limited his influence, the better. He will not, he, will, he cannot build up any cause. The same lax irresponsible course he has manifested in his family and carried out in the office and in the church disqualify him for being a man after God's own heart. He does the work of God negligently. The curse of God rested upon Meroz, not because guilty of enormous crimes above others, but for neglect. There was a work that Meroz shunned. Kershi Meroz said the angel of the Lord, Kershi bitterly the inhabitants thereof, because they came not out, came not to the help of the Lord, to the help of the Lord against the mighty. Judges 5.23. This admonition being given against Uriah Smith is also given against many of us today in the movement. We cannot afford to do the work that God sends us negligently. Should we choose to continue in that path, the curse of God would rest upon us just as surely as it did upon Moran's. <clears throat> The powers of darkness are at work and are brought to bear more upon those who are engaged in advancing the interest of God's cause. Satan will come in at every avenue, every spot that is not guarded. There will always be a work to do to defend the right and to condemn the wrong. I saw that Brother Smith's mind had been molded by his past experience in his connection with Sister Smith that his sense of wrong is not acute. Satan would plant his hellish banner in his own house and in the office, and he not perceive it, but think that it was the banner of the cross of Christ. <clears throat> Brother Smith's position has been a defective one. God wants men who have spiritual eyesight or they are good for nothing in his cause. There are many today that have taken the words of Uriah Smith as an equal and in many, and in many ways even superior to that of the spirit of prophecy. Now, um, I just want to comment on the curse of Miraz. Please. So remember, we had studied this when we studied Judges chapter 5. And this was in the context of a message, right? Exactly. Now, there was, uh, this is from the song of Deborah and Barak. So we know that the message of Deborah and Barak was a message that was addressing an error that had come into this movement or or that was not removed from this movement correct right and um, specifically we deal with Sisera um, being this general and and we liken it to the message of Parminder Right? Correct. So this curse of Maraz was those who were, um, uh, I guess, 
inactive, right? No disagreement. Yeah. So, um, and specifically what, um, because we don't have much other than what it says in this verse, it's just that they did not come to the help of the Lord against um, the mighty. And it's the help of the Lord to the help of the Lord against the mighty. Right? So it's a doubling, right? So, so this would represent those who didn't stand for right um, when they had an opportunity to do so. In a sense, it's those who are, are kind of neutral to some degree. Very true. <clears throat> we cannot afford to be fence sitters. Mm -hmm. We cannot afford to be neutral. We can't say time will tell. My point exactly. Yeah. Now. Time will tell does not compute anymore um, because he's telling us what to expect and all we need to do is just be observant at this point. As Mrs. White continued, <clears throat> and as she is pulling this up, just as the translators had, cursed be he that doeth the work of the Lord deceitfully, from the margin, negligently. And cursed be he that keepeth back his sword from blood. Moab hath been at ease from his youth, and he hath settled on his leaves. Jeremiah 48, 10 and 11. Jeremiah 48 continues in with the, the complete verse of 4811, Moab hath been at ease from his youth, and he hath settled on his lees, and hath not been emptied from vessel to vessel, neither hath he gone into captivity. Therefore his taste remaineth in him, and his scent is not changed. Amos 6.1 Woe to them that are at ease in Zion and trust in the mountains of Samaria, which are named chief of the nations to whom the house of Israel came. <clears throat> we cannot be at ease today. We cannot be time will tell people within this movement. The more we do this, the more we dishonor God, the more we are doing the work of the Lord deceitfully, the more we are inviting the curse of Miraz. The wrath of God was kindled against Saul because he did not carry out his work of justice in, sight, in smiting Amalek and utterly destroying them. <clears throat> and it shall come to pass at that time that I will search Jerusalem with candles and punish the men that are settled on their leaves, that say in their heart, the Lord will not do good, neither will he do evil. Brother Smith has excellent qualifications, but he has a work to do that he has excused himself from performing. And he has not sustained those whom God has called to reprove sin and wrong. Therefore, spiritual blindness has come upon him. Quite an example of time will tell. Do we wish to be spiritually blind? Is this the path that we are choosing?
Therefore, their goods shall become a booty, and their houses a desolation. They shall also build houses, but not inhabit them. And they shall plant vineyards, but not drink the wine thereof. <clears throat> the great day of the Lord is near. It is near and hasteneth greatly. Even the voice of the day of the Lord. The mighty men shall cry there bitterly. Can someone read these next two paragraphs, please? Meek and lonely one, read the sentiments of every heart. He is a perfect savior. I have something in the way here. Okay, I can't read the bar in the way. Special occasions when he saw the deceptions which by Satan suggested were leading men from light and truth into darkness. When he saw men under Satan's dictation fighting against omnipotence, divinity flashed through humanity and as a judge, he pronounced the condemnation of the wrongdoers. The light of his divinity flashed about him and many of the people who heard his words believed. There was no guile on his lips and the words he spoke came to pass in the terrible judgments which fell upon the Jewish nation. Okay, we're going, to hold, <clears throat> we're going to hold for a second. We have often accepted that Christ fills the role of prophet, priest, and king, right? Amen. Yes. Yet what role is being shown that Christ is also filling? I'm <clears throat> the judge here. Prophet, priest, judge, and savior. Our savior is our judge. Amen. Our savior knows human weakness better than we do. Our judge knows us better than we anticipate. Okay, can you please continue? Sure. Cursed be he that doeth the word of the Lord deceitfully, and cursed be he that keepeth not, keepeth back his sword from blood. Moab hath been at ease from his youth, and he hath that settled on his lees and hath not been emptied from vessel to vessel, neither hath he gone into captivity. Therefore his taste remained in him and his scent is not changed. Therefore, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will send unto him wanderers that shall cause him to wander and shall empty his vessels and break their bottles. Jeremiah 48, 10 to 12. Okay. And it shall come uh, to pass. Stop for a second. <clears throat> What does the Hebrewism mean? Emptied from vessel to vessel. How should we take this? God fills our vessel so every time we empty it. Um, wouldn't the vessel also be an equivalent of a garment yes so moab does not wish to see his character changed neither mm -hmm. has he gone into captivity so his taste <clears throat> his character has remained the same. Is this the condition we wish ourselves to be seen in? Well, it says taste and see that the Lord is good. That's in Psalm 34. Right. We're not supposed to be tasting of ourselves and enjoying ourselves, remaining as we are. Okay, 
if you would read the second portion down to Zephan, the, the clarification of the verse. And it shall come to pass at that time that I will search Jerusalem with candles and punish the men that are settled on their knees that say in their heart, the Lord will not do good, neither will he do evil. The great day of the Lord is near. It is near and hasteth greatly. Even the voice of the day of the Lord, the mighty man shall cry there bitterly. Zephaniah 1, 12 to 14. Again, she repeats this portion of Zephaniah. <clears throat> and again, she repeats, Kershi Maraz, saith the angel of the Lord, Kershi bitterly, the inhabitants thereof, because they came not to the help of the Lord, to the help of the Lord against the mighty. This is a message. There are many that do not wish to give the message. There were many that refused the message of July 18th. They were refusing to see this as a clarion call to be prepared <clears throat> because the Lord's judgments are about to fall. How can we ignore the trumpet of the Lord? The warning was given in 1905. We are given a warning of what is about to happen. Yet, since July 18th, the church and many within the movement are trying to sweep this warning under the rug. It has become that we are a perfect example of being benefited by the first angel's message and choosing not to accept the second angel's message. For how can we fear God and not give glory to him? The description of Moab represents the churches that have become like Moab. <clears throat> they have not stood at their post of duty as faithful sentinels. They have not cooperated with the heavenly intelligences by exercising their God-given ability to do the word of, to do the will of God, pressing back the powers of darkness and using every power God has given them to advance truth and righteousness in our world. They have a knowledge of the truth, but they have not practiced what they know. The pastors and elders have not advanced in zeal. And the churches are what? Please read that aloud. The churches are dead spiritually. <clears throat> they are as salt without the virtue, the saving properties, which salt is supposed to have. This cold and lifeless state is contagious. Which of the churches of the seven are said to have been dead? It would be the Laodiceans, lukewarm. Is that where we wish to find ourselves today? Of course not. The officers of the churches, the presidents of conferences are in need of being converted. Oh, how much a revival is needed in the churches. Variance exists. Many hearts are filled with envy. <clears throat> with evil surmisings and evil thinking. 
evil speaking is heard. The Lord is ashamed to call the members of such churches brethren. This was written in 1891. How much more true is this as we see it today? What are your thoughts? My thought is, it's 1891, they were in such bad shape, um, and that nobody could see it, it and it's really contagious. <sighs> no one in the world's in such a poor way. Well, <clears throat> what light had been received prior to 1891? Are you talking about the third angel's message in, in 88? Is that what it was? And exactly. Rejected? Exactly. Yeah, only talking, what, what, three years at that point? Correct. Another symbol? Yep. By 1891, she had recognized the officers of the churches, the presidents of the conferences are in need of being converted. They had spoken against the third angel's message. <clears throat> they had refused the light that had come from God. They chose to stand in opposition to him. Yet we have many today that are ever so willing to say that the church accepted this message and has been proclaiming it ever since 1888. Uh, if, this, yeah. if this was the truth, then why? Is this world still here? Yeah, that's, that's actually a logical question. Is this not self-delusion? Yeah, mass hypnosis? Possibly. I look at it as self delusion because they would rather accept a lie than be willing to accept the truth. Yeah, too much to give up. What's coming to me too is where she's speaking of salt again there and Christ said that if it had lost its savor, it were better to be trampled underfoot of men. Uh, people that she's describing here are the ones that would trample Christ beneath their feet. Or that if Christ himself appeared before them, that they would crucify him anew. Exactly. This scene has been pre presented before me as fully as I could bear to behold it. <clears throat> then the scene has changed and representations of things existing at the present time have passed before me. I have seen men who have been placed in positions of trust as watchmen, molding and fashioning the work in our conferences <clears throat> in accordance with worldly policy, which God condemns. 
the medical missionary work is sick and needs the restoring power of the great healer before it can accomplish a work in harmony with its name. The great day of the Lord is near, it is near, and hasteneth greatly. Zephaniah 114. As I'm trying to get back on my feet, I spend a little bit of time in front and in, in and around light, even though my eyes right now are very light sensitive. Last evening, friends from years past were posting <clears throat> on Facebook regarding the fact that this year would be a 45th reunion my class's 45th reunion. One party asked the question, <clears throat> that they knew of a member whose son had chosen to become their daughter would this son be allowed access to the women's dormitory or should it be recommended that the academy build a third dormitory for transgenders we have seen the church accept worldly policy The Adventist health system <clears throat> is one group of hospitals that provide abortions because the government has told them to do so. How much more like the world does the church need to become? And the Florida health system is in business with Disneyland, Disney World. Lovely. I did not know that. I have seen men who have been placed in positions of trust as watchmen, molding and fashioning the work in our conferences in accordance with worldly policy which God approves or does God condemn? Condemns. <clears throat> if he is condemning it, why aren't we? Christ gave his life for the salvation of the world. One place is not to be worked over and over again, while the other parts of God's world are left barren and unworked. God's only begotten son gave his life as a propitiation for the sins of the whole world. He who knew no sin was made sin for us, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Christ also hath loved us, Paul writes, and hath given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling savor, Ephesians 5, verse 2. Thus he did that which we may be, all that he desires us to be, representatives of him, living lives that reveal his fragrance of character, his purity of thought. He died that others beholding him might be led to desire to be like him, pure and undefiled, wholly acceptable to God, without spot or wrinkle or any such thing. <clears throat> that day is a day of wrath 
a day of trouble and distress, a day of wasteness and desolation, a day of darkness and gloominess, a day of clouds and thick darkness, a day of the trumpet and alarm against the fenced cities and against the high towers. And I will bring distress upon men that they shall walk like blind men because they have sinned against the Lord <clears throat> and their blood shall be as poured out as dust and their flesh as the dung. Neither their silver nor their gold shall be able to deliver them in the day of the Lord's wrath, but the whole land shall be devoured as by the fire of his jealousy, for he shall make even a speedy riddance of all them that dwell in the land. A corrupt union has been formed to tear down God's memorial of creation, the seventh day, which he hath hollow, hollowed and blessed and gave to man to be a sign between God and his people to be observed throughout their generation forever. A period is coming when everyone will take sides between the Sabbath of the fourth commandment, which the Lord has sanctified and blessed, and the spurious Sabbath instituted by the man of sin. An idle Sabbath has been set up as the golden image was set up in the plains of Dura. And as Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, issued a decree that all who would not bow down and worship this image should be killed, so a proclamation will be made that all who will not reverence the Sunday institution will be punished with imprisonment and death. Thus, the Sabbath of the Lord is trampled underfoot. <clears throat> but the Lord has declared, woe unto them that decree unrighteous decrees and write grievous that grievousness which they have prescribed. Now, we have Zephaniah 1 to 14, 1 14 through 2 3 quoted. <clears throat> okay. Can you help me read that, please, from the chat? Propitiation. The act of appearing, appeasing wrath and conciliating the favor of an offended person. The act of making propitious. It says number two in theology, the atonement or atoning sacrifice offered to God to assuage his wrath and render him propitious to sinners. Christ is the propitiation for the sins of men. Romans 3.25, one and first John uh, 2 2. Thank you. <clears throat> now, since we've gone over Zephaniah 1 14 to the end of the chapter, we're now going to read Zephaniah 2 1, 2, and 3. Gather yourselves together, yea, gather together, O nation not desired. Gather together, O movement ignored before the decree bring forth before the day passes the chaff before the fierce anger of the lord come upon you before the day of the lord's anger come upon you seek ye the lord all ye meek of the earth which have wrought his judgment seek righteousness seek meekness it may be ye shall be hid in the day of the lord's anger Do we seek to have the Lord's anger fall upon us? The Lord of heaven permits the world to choose who they will have as a ruler. Let all read carefully the 13th chapter of Revelation, for it concerns every human agent, great and small, 
Every human being must take sides, either for the true and the living God, who is given to the memorial, to the world, the memorial of creation in the seventh day Sabbath, or for a false Sabbath instituted by men who have exalted themselves above all that is called God or that is worshiped, who have taken upon themselves the attributes of Satan in oppressing the loyal and true who keep the commandments of God. This persecuting power will compel the worship of the beast by institute insisting, excuse me, on the observance of the Sabbath that he has instituted. Thus he blasphemes God, sitting in the temple of God and showing himself that he is God. <clears throat> sitting in the temple of God and showing <clears throat> himself that he is God. The worship of a false Sabbath is a wedge that split the Protestant churches from God and left them what? Naked. They had not a text of scripture to sustain their false God, but yet a deception, hoary with age, but still, still a deception, was commended to reverence and exalted while the Sabbath of the fourth commandment was trampled upon and God dishonored. The Bible was before them with a plain, thus saith the Lord. And the penalty that is the part of the transgressor. But as Adam and Eve and Eden listened to the falsehoods of Satan, so the righteous world are following their example. How much more direct does she need to be? I'm looking at one thing very quickly. <clears throat> okay. We have just a couple of minutes left in our meeting today. Mrs. White is very, very direct in everything that she has had to say regarding the warnings of this first chapter of Zephaniah. I don't know how much more direct she could have been. She has shown that the leadership and specific elements of the leadership <clears throat> have turned their backs to God. This is no different than what we were addressing in the eighth chapter of Ezekiel with the 25 that have their backs to the temple and are facing the sun. We have a warning that is before us. Do we wish to be head so that we will not see the outpouring of the wrath of God? Or are we so impenitent that we think that we're going to be able to withstand it? We have a choice to make. We must begin and show our decisions by our actions. Any comments, any thoughts before we close with prayer? Okay, the, there's a two o'clock is what I'm gathering out of the email today. Yes. Yeah. At, at two. 
Yeah. Thank you. Okay, shall we close with prayer? Heavenly Father, we thank you for the trumpet that is sounding. We are seeing that we need to be prepared. We are seeing that we need to walk according to the path that you set before us and not according to our own devisings. Be with us this day. I pray, Father, for your blessing upon the afternoon meeting. I pray for your blessing upon this study that is coming. I thank you for those that have participated today. Help us each now <clears throat> that we may continue to hold on to you to go forward as you would have us to go. Direct us now. May we each worship you in spirit and in truth. Help and prepare us for the wedding feast of your son and for the work that is to be done before that feast. For this we thank you, for this we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen.